It happens to the best of us. Aunt Martha is hitting the sherry a little too hard, and suddenly you're arguing about what Trump really meant when he said dictator for a day, while the rest of us are just trying to eat our sweet potato pie. So how do you navigate that tricky moment without getting disowned? Well, my next guest actually wrote the book on how best to deal with this. Joining me now is Denise Gitchum, author of Politics for People Who Hate Politics, How to Engage Without Losing Your Friends or Selling Your Soul. Well, Denise, there's always that awkward moment that, that during the dinner, standing around the turkey, talking to grandma, how do you deal with these encounters uh, that could take you down a rabbit hole you will not escape from? Well, thank you so much for having me on. You know, you were saying earlier about Sherry. Sometimes it doesn't even take Sherry. You know, you just no, have that one it doesn't. person you know it's going to be there, and you're just dreading it from the moment you see their invitation. But, you know, this is such an important topic, even more so beyond the holidays, as we go into the election season. That's not going to be an easy one for anybody. And especially for those of us who have really strongly held convictions. Um, you know, I've this book that I wrote is really an amalgamation of many of the mistakes that I have made in my 20 plus years of partisan politics. And also trying to navigate how to how to love my friends that are on the other side of the aisle that I ultimately have to work with when I'm in Washington. And so some of the things that I've learned a along the way are, are certainly things that aren't surprising. They're based in psychology and in some spiritual principles that I draw from my faith. But what I've learned is that when I established at the outset of every conversation what my motive actually is for engaging, that I want to have this relationship. It's going to last beyond this election cycle, and that it's important to me to preserve it. I have a different way of engaging from the outset. And I think that when we have those those motives not only stated in our mind, but maybe established in the beginning of an argument, what you think might become an argument, you're able to get some agreement as to, you know, what are sort of our boundaries? What are our guardrails around our conversation so that we can keep at least this relationship preserved? Um, the other thing I would just say is it's really important to engage with humility. I think that's so lacking these days, especially when we're so convinced that we're right. You know, we have those issues that we just feel like this is God's truth. And, you know, we all have a part of the truth, but none of us have a whole truth. We all have a perspective on the truth based on our experiences and what we've what we've seen in life. And so just having that humility, the self-awareness to say, I may not have all the facts and asking, being curious as to why someone else holds a different perspective. Those are really important starting points for a good conversation and, and really having that relationship last. And the last so thing I would just say, so go ahead, please. I no, don't want to no, keep I'm going. So, go no, no, I was just going to say real quick. So how do you uh, how do you keep the ham from flying um, when you really <laughs> when you when you really want to stick to your deeply held values and beliefs? How do you find that balance? Yeah, I mean, I love that, that just that image of ham flying. I've never actually seen that, but I'm sure it's happened. Um, you know, I think keep your fork on your own plate, right? I think that's kind of like keeping your eyes on your own paper and really making sure that you can't be responsible for what other people are going to say. We can't control others, and we shouldn't want to. But what we can do is we can control ourselves. So one of the rules of thumb that I have for talking whenever I know that I, you know, because you feel that inside, you know, you feel you get heated, and you're like, I'm not sure where this conversation is going to go I need to check myself. But one of the rules that I have is when you have something hard to speak, and I think it's so important that we speak the truth, our truth, mm -hmm. make sure that we do it in love. And my rule of thumb is the harder the truth, the greater the love. And I know that's so difficult to do, and people will say, gosh, am I compromising? But truthfully, if you want to even win an argument, like if you just want to be influential, you know, you really can argue till you're blue in the face, and you're not going to change most people's minds on deeply held convictions. But if you want to have a chance of engaging in a manner that not only serves the relationship for the long term, but also gives you an ability to continue to have influence in someone's life or in a conversation, people are much more willing to receive things that they disagree with if it's spoken in love, right? It's just a natural human response. So really keeping that at the forefront, not only in the holiday season when there's ham to be thrown, but also into the new year as we have a, an increasingly acrimonious political um, just environment is so important for us because I believe our greatest threat is not anything external. I really believe that our greatest threat in America Mm -hmm. is the way that we treat each other and the division that we cause every single day when we choose to engage otherwise. 
So it may not just be grandma, it may be me too. Okay, got it, understood. It's definitely thank me too. <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first to claim that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Denise Kitchum. Really appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. Have a Coming up day. in our next